we were the first company in the world who launched wearables coupled with coaching as a subscription plan. Idea is only one percent. I have failed three sixty five days a year. Investors are very skeptical around monetization. Why health apps don't have very high amount of engagement? In the world of gaming, we call this habit loops. You are not going to lose or win by having more missiles and guns and rockets, but by having healthier citizens. Our vision is to make the world live hundred years. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is our third interview. Uh, we're doing a series of interviews with people who are um, somehow closely related to digital health in some way or another. We had some experts in security, uh, in uh, med tech, and the main goal of this series is to talk to um, to help startup founders to actually uh, bring their startups to life. And I'm really honored to welcome today Vishal Gandal. He's our guest today, and I'm sure he has so many great insights and possibly will help some of you uh, to make your startup happen. So hello, Vishal. Hi, Alex. A pleasure to be on your show. I'm really excited uh, to share my insights with uh, your listeners. Thank you. So could you please just tell us a little bit of your background so our audience understands what, how, how you came to, to the idea of creating a startup in digital health? So uh, my background actually is in the world of computer games. I, I'm not a doctor or uh, some IIT technical or engineer. Uh, I come from a very non-traditional background when it comes to digital health. I started coding games when I was 16. And I started my first company uh, early, very early, and in fact, ended up raising venture capital in 1999. Uh, my first venture was called India Games, uh, which we scaled to be India's biggest gaming company, which was later sold to Walt Disney. And then uh, I was with Disney for about a year, and then I left Disney to start Goki, uh, which is my venture in the health space. Uh, I would say more specifically in the preventive healthcare space. And I think uh, if you look at my background and my journey, I have been looking at health and health tech, not from the lens of a provider, but from the lens of a consumer. And I would say when people are thinking of their startup, especially in the health, it's very important to make this differentiation and understand who your customer is. Because a lot of times, uh, if your customer ends up becoming a provider, their motivations and their requirements are much more different than the consumer itself. So uh, given my background in gaming, I, the only thing I knew about was how can we make the consumers make happy and make it fun. And uh, one thing which, again, we will talk about later in this uh, program is about why health apps don't have very high amount of engagement. And what I believe is the larger problem in the space of health is not a problem of access or data. Everybody says, oh, my app will give you more data or my app will give you access to this doctor and that provider and this expert. And my point is that actually that is not the problem. The problem in health is everybody knows they should not smoke. They should not drink excessive alcohol. They should not have junk food. Everybody knows they should exercise. But people don't do that, not because they don't know an expert. It's because they lack the motivation. So the way I think of healthcare from the consumer end is how can we create a, a set of applications and tools which motivates consumers to take their own health in their own hands and become in control of their health. All right. Very interesting. Before we actually get into some of our engagement and some of the things you said, just a very short introduction of Goki and what's, what can you describe this ecosystem that you have successfully built? So Goki is a preventive healthcare ecosystem. It's a health plan 
which you subscribe to, which provides you end-to-end -end services to track, manage, and get rewarded to be healthy. So for tracking, we provide you with wearable trackers and apps, and you can track your uh, both uh, medical as well as non-medical parameters using the Goki app and the Goki wearable. You can get advice from coaches and doctors and health experts. And once you start getting this advice, you can buy health products, supplements, snacks, uh, nutraceuticals, proteins, everything from the Goki app. And at the same time, you can even get your insurance coverage from Goki. So we are trying to become your partner for entire health journey from when you want to be healthy to in case you have an episode of uh, where you need medical intervention, we will provide coverage there also. Some uh, small clarifications and some historical data when it all started. Uh, so I assume you did not need any angel money for the first prototype, you use your own money. Uh, why uh, what's what was the the main idea of the first prototype what was the first product you built so the first insight which i had was that wearables in itself are of no use i had used fitbit and i had used a bunch of wearables and we all know that wearables you typically use for a few months and then you stop using them uh, and once again, the reason why people stopped using them was not that they were not good devices. The reason that was that the data, just knowing that I'm walking X amount of steps was not helping a lot of people getting motivated. So the idea was that can a device com combined with the service make it more effective and more efficient? So that was the hypothesis. And when we launched our first prototype, actually, we did not even use an app. We were using a regular tracker and WhatsApp. So we were just asking people to send pictures of their daily data and the coaches were sending them WhatsApp messages. So to validate this part, and we saw that people who were self-tracking, which means not using any coach, their adherence you know, started and then dropped while there was somebody who was following up, their adherence was higher. And that's when we realized that this is exactly the same problem even in education. Just think about it, right? Technically, there is all the books in the world are online. I mean, you have a Wikipedia and a million free courses available of every university today because of COVID, but still people are not learning. Why? Not because they don't have access, it's because they don't have motivation. And similarly, even when you have access, if you are learning with a guide, you are more likely to be learning better than doing it on your own. So of course, there is a small percentage of people who are great at self-learning and self-motivation, but the majority of the people need guidance, motivation, and accountability. So that was the insight. And okay. that insight is what took Goki from where it is in 2014 to now this entire ecosystem where the advice is coupled with so many other elements of health. Okay, so you validated the idea. Uh, did you have like the, the monetization uh, picture of how you're gonna monetize the whole business right in the beginning or there were like several pivots in that? So one second, Alex, we actually figured out monetization before anything else. Because my simple thing was that if you don't pay, you don't value health. Health is one of those cases that there is a million free advice available, but you don't follow it. But when you go and you pay money, it's like self-selecting that I am serious about health. So I think the theory for us was we are only going to go after premium users, people who are willing to pay and who want to make the serious change in health versus the freemium model. While the freemium model works great for games and a whole host of other products and categories, I do believe that for a serious thing like health, uh, it is better to focus on first the premium users and then figure out what is your premium strategy. Okay, got it. 
so when was the first time you actually introduced coaches into the product? From day zero. We started with coaching. We did not, the first, if you, in fact, TechCrunch did a story on this way back in 2013, 2014. We were the first company in the world who launched wearables coupled with coaching as a subscription plan. So nobody did that. And of course, now everybody's talking about it, but we pioneered this idea way before anybody else. And again, remember, I came from the world of gaming where this is what happens. You buy a console, but the money is not made in the console. The money is made by selling you games. So that same concept of console gaming is what I really took on to help and said the wearable devices like a console, which is making you play but the real game and the real engagement is happening on our app. And what you buy on a daily basis on our app is products like protein and snacks and uh, you know other things which you want to purchase for good health. That's the health store that you introduced in 2017, right? That's correct. Okay, how many coaches are there on the platform right now? So, you know, we have a few thousand in the network but the mm -hmm. active can range from two to three hundred depending on the month because it's a marketplace so when you come on the platform you select your health goals and then we recommend you that hey, these are the five coaches who are best suited for you and that's when your journey starts with the coach so it's a two-sided marketplace where there are coaches who want to coach people and then there are users or we call them players so our our customers are not called patients, by the way. Hmm. They're called players because you are not sick. One of the fundamental problems, which I believe in a health app, is that you are calling everybody a patient. And believe me, nobody wants to be reminded that they are a patient. So one of the reasons you don't want to have a health app is because it keeps reminding you of your illness. While at Goki, we make it fun. We want you, so an average person opens our app three times a day. That's great. So actually, that's how we kind of move closer to the question of engagement. And I know personally from my experience that it's really hard to get engaged in apps like that. So how did you manage to do that? See, that's firstly because you need to understand what is the purpose of your app and the behaviors which you are driving on the app are the behaviors which require daily engagement. For example, you don't book a doctor appointment every day by definition. Right. You don't need a prescription every day by definition. You don't need to go and make an insurance claim every day. These are things which are episodic, maybe once a month, once in two months, once in three months. And, you know, for most people, I hope it is once a year, maybe. So if your use case is only episodic, you cannot get engagement. So in our case, our use case of Goki was right from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, you are using Goki. And even while you are sleeping, you are wearing our tracker to track your sleep. So my use case is a 24 by 7 use case. And in this, there is some data which is captured by the wearable, which is 24 7. There is some data which you report, self-report, like water, how much water you are drinking, how much, what food you are eating. You can take photos and pictures. And then there is an interaction with the coach, which is on chat. So think of it like it, it's like my fitness pal meets WhatsApp, meets Fitbit, meets gaming. So we've kind of integrated different use cases into one super app. Mm -hmm. And because it's a super app, there are multiple reasons for you to use the app, which is why you are coming back again and again to the app itself. That's very cool. And I'm sure your background in gaming industry helped you a lot to create such a great app, right? Because in the world of gaming, we call this habit loops, right? What mm -hmm. loop are we creating for you to open the game every day? For example, if you open Goki's app every day, you get rewarded. There's a chest which opens and rewards you with coins, which is the Goki coins you can Car use. Karma get. points, right? Karma points are different. We have Goki oh, Cash. Uh -huh. Goki Cash is the cash used to get discounts to buy health products. Mm -hmm. You have to earn this cash, which is think of it like our own cryptocurrency. 
uh, which you earn by you mine this currency by doing good habits. And karma points actually are not it's for donating. So the mm-hmm. Goki cash is for your own use and karma points are to donate. Okay, now, now clear. So the next question, um, unlike many others, you've decided to create your own device. Could you please lead us through that path of making that decision? Like why not to use something else? Why to create your own device? So again, that's a very interesting uh, scenario. So firstly, we created the device because there was nothing there. In 2014, there was only Fitbit and Apple had just introduced something. So, and the price point was just too expensive. You know, we were looking at a much more affordable price point, which is why we had to create the device. But now what has happened is that we are actually the only registered FDA, Indian FDA approved medical device in the country. So what has now happened is that there is a whole plethora of very cheap Chinese devices which have flooded the market like everywhere else. But mm-hmm. their accuracy, their data, everything is questionable. But today in the post-COVID world, the variables have become very important for people to track their daily parameters like blood oxygen level, heart rate, uh, even blood pressure. And we have actually doubled down our focus on that because this is what people are using now to take care of their health in a very serious way. So what started off just as, hey, because there is no other device, we are going to get our device, has now become a very important part of our strategy. However, this strategy may not be the same for other markets. Like in India, it's different, but in a, in a Western market or where there is a huge penetration of Apple or Fitbit, we have an open API and people can even connect their own devices to Goki. So it is not restricted to our own device. Uh, you have the ability to connect other variables also to us. We are like the service. So think of it like you know Sony, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, but you know, there are certain games which can work on all these consoles. So that's what we are doing. While we do give you our game with your console, but it doesn't mean that if you have a different gaming console, you can't play the Goki game. Are there many, many customers who bought the device, but not using the Goki app itself? No, you can't buy the device without the service. Oh. So you, you can't get so. Okay. So again, just think of our model like Verizon Wireless, right? Mm-hmm. Verizon or AT&T is not just selling you a phone. Their main business is to sell you the telecom service. So the service is the product and the phone is just the tool to communicate. And now you can either bring your own device or you can buy a device from your telecom provider. So the same model that you can either bring your own wearable device or we will provide you a wearable device with our help. Oh, I see. So, so we don't have, you can't buy Goki device standalone, period. It understood. comes with the entire system. Got it. Uh, how different is to, to develop a hardware solution? Well, before you probably worked with software, only before. How is it completely different a way of development and product development? No, clearly hardware is much more tougher to make. I, I must admit that that hardware is not very easy. Uh, in our case, we were lucky because uh, we started developing hardware at a time when there were not too many players. So we had to ourselves learn firmware development and all of that. Uh, so today, the reason our hardware has much higher amount of accuracy and so on is because we control the hardware and the underlying software. I mean, we don't make the hardware. The hardware is OEM. Right. There are, you know, multiple providers and, you know, China is where still most of this is made. Uh, we are hoping that other markets open up, but China continues to dominate. But today, there are a ton of companies who can provide you hardware. So, in fact, it's even more easier to do hardware today because there are a dozen providers. But then the problem is about differentiation. I see. Uh Let's talk a little bit about fundraising. At what point you decided that you, you need to get more funds to, to develop your product? So again, right? So the way you think about it is product market fit and product validation. That was the time we were seed funded. Then once the product was validated is when we got CDs A funding. 
then we got series b funding so i think it is just like uh, in college or university right you are in kindergarten then you go to school then you go to high school and then you go to college so i think it's kind of similar that based on how much your idea is validated uh, and how many customers you have on your platform you are go you go through different stages and that's when uh, more people come in join you and that's when more investors come in support you but did you have any problems raising fund or it took you I mean, too too long? let's put it this way that raising funds is never a fun part and you know it is not as easy as people think it is uh, it's because it's it's the reason is not that because your product is good or bad the reason is that today investors also have a lot of choice you know there are you know they are you might have a good idea but the investor is getting pitched by 20 good ideas every day from different industries may not just be healthcare so and the second thing is a lot of times uh, your vision may needs to be clearly explained and understand to the investors who may or you know they may not be uh, they, they are mostly analysts and from the financial world and they don't have the kind of insights which you do and lastly uh, there is a huge challenge around uh, monetization i think uh, you know investors are very skeptical around monetization and i think a lot of companies don't do monetization and their whole point is i will monetize the user later and i would say that today if you don't have monetization it will be difficult for you to raise money because investors want to understand your how will you make money okay and and one more clarification you know that lot lots of startup founders they are um somebody say that the main thing is the idea somebody says that the main thing is the team who is going to implement it somebody says that the main thing is just a great pitch deck uh, and the presentation of it w- what do you think is actually is the the best fit for that see the main thing is execution and execution comes from team so i would say that idea is only 1% you know the idea which we had a million people can get this idea but it is all about how you execute the idea and the team you put together to do so i would say that you know execution which effectively means the team that is the most important part of uh, you making any product or any service success thanks i think that's very important for lots of our audience to hear that um Now the question uh a little bit uh on the side um I read the news about your uh collaboration with Leo Burnett which is one of the huge the biggest uh, agencies in the world um uh, usually startup startups are trying to get like collaboration with some small companies that are trying to agency and you went straight to the to one of the biggest most famous agencies how how does that go for you So we are now at a stage of scaling the business so goki's goal is to acquire millions and millions of consumers which is all about brand and consumers and bringing these consumers on board which is why we needed somebody who is very good at consumer and consumer advertising see remember we are not traditional healthcare which is marketing to doctors and hospitals right. if i am a traditional healthcare or a health tech company i may not need a agency which is consumer because your customer actually is a doctor or an insurance company or a healthcare provider so there this strategy will not work remember our strategy is going to the consumer and the way i think about myself is like sony playstation so if sony playstation wants to advertise it will be advertising directly to the consumers and that is exactly what our proposition is is going direct to consumer and in fact uh, i don't know if i can share my screen i want to show you what is our vision so that you will understand that why are we working uh, so closely uh, in the consumer side of things and how what we are trying to do is something which we believe is a worldwide uh, opportunity not only in india in fact we are looking to even go outside india uh, very soon so if you see can you see the screen yes so if you ask me what is goki's vision what are we really trying to do so imagine if your life is a game as we say goki is all about uh, a game of life as we put as we put it uh, we just put this uh, yeah you can see this now properly this yes, slide yes yes 
So if Goki is about winning the game of life, how do you win the game of life? You don't win the game of life unlike a video game you where you have seven lives or 10 lives or unlimited lives. In this world, you only have one life. And the way to win the game of life is to level up your immunity. So the, the currency in this game is immunity, but you cannot acquire immunity by popping a pill or taking an injection. You can only acquire it by focusing on sleep, nutrition, fitness, cognition, and happiness. And that's what leads to longevity. And if you ask me, that's what, what is Goki really trying to do? We are trying to help you get better sleep, improve your nutrition, improve your activity levels, help develop your brain. And then with karma points and everything else, we want you to also look at becoming a better person from within, which is the karma angle, as we say, which is what leads to happiness. And this if you see and look at all the science around this, right? If you look at even the, the Ikigai model in Japan that why are people living longer? You will see that the elements of all of this is what is contributing to longevity. And I believe that COVID has given this entire shakeup to the world that if your population is going to be comorbid, diabetic, and you have a population who is unhealthy, uh, one COVID has created so much havoc. Imagine if there are more viruses which will come, uh, entire countries, economies will be destroyed. So previously, countries were saying, how can I have a better military? How can I have more nuclear missiles? But now it is, how can I have healthier citizens? Because you are not going to lose or win by having more missiles and guns and rockets, but by having healthier citizens, which is why the longevity framework comes in and that is what Goki is trying to do that's very cool and i love that you have your own uh, maslow pyramid uh, your Goki pyramid this is really great uh all starabers like to hear some fail stories like how many what's uh, some major mistakes you think you did on your way uh, to becoming such a great product so you know again if you ask me how many failures i have had i have failed 365 days a year. It is a, it's, a, it's a story of failures and one day we succeed. It is not a, a, a story of success and one failure. Right. So I think that's what startups are, right? And the, just to give you an example, the first service which we launched of Goki, 100% of our wearables failed. 100%, not even one. We had to recall the entire lot and give people new devices. Similarly, our app failed completely and we had to move to WhatsApp and said to our consumers that, hey, sorry, our app is not working. For you, we are going to create a WhatsApp group and we will be coaching you in WhatsApp groups. So I think what has happened clearly is that failure is actually an important part of product development. It is no longer uh, that you, it is not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. And we have imbibed failure. So I can just tell you that I have failed every day. Uh, can you tell us maybe some of your short goal plans uh, for the nearest future in terms of your product development? What other maybe features you're thinking to add if, that's, if you can tell us? Yeah. So I think one other point on failure, uh, which I want to kind of add here, that a lot of times design is something which is, very interesting and consumers don't understand it. And I'll give you an example. When we created our first device, we figured out that the biggest reason people stopped using our wearable was because they lost the charger or they forgot to carry the charger with them. So what we did in our second design is we actually embedded a USB charger on the device. And we said that now you can never lose your charger. And then we ship the device to people. You know, maximum people return the device to us saying that, that there is no charger. Because while we innovated on the design, consumers were unable to figure out that the charger is now embedded. They opened the box and they said, there is no charger. You have cheated me. And they sent the whole thing back. 
then we actually had to create pictures of how this charging works and what happens and the biggest design thing which we did became our biggest problem because everybody was returning the whole box to us saying that there is no charger for example so you know there is a lot of stories where when you innovate and you don't tell the consumer what can happen uh, it, it becomes really interesting uh sorry what was your next question and the next question was maybe you could share some short uh, short term goals of your product what are some new features you're going to add to your ecosystem so we have just announced the goki smart stride which is our connected treadmill mm-hmm. we have also announced goki's integration with essencia glucometer which is from uh, panasonic so you will see that we are actually now trying to add more and more data points to our ecosystem and these data points could be medical like your blood glucose or your blood pressure or it could be fitness like your treadmill or your cycling or your dumbbells so what we are seeing is connected health and connected fitness are both integrated for us because when you are working out and when you are checking your glucose they are both connected because excessive workout could massively reduce your blood sugar or if you are eating something with high in glycemic index it's better to do a workout after lunch so that it gets your blood sugar under control and we now have the ability to look at both that's one the second focus which we are doing is on diabetes i think diabetes is a big challenge in india and worldwide we know diabetes is an epidemic which can be completely controlled and completely in most cases you can even reverse it or come back to normal levels and the reason why it is not happening is because people are not aware there is not data there is nothing so if you ask me in the short to medium term we will be focusing a lot on diabetes as a segment which we are working on and of course uh, the entire ecosystem around uh, new wearables and uh, the whole connected connected life as we put it that's very interesting good luck with that uh maybe just a few uh, few words about your plans on expansion i know that you're you're very good in the indian market and how different it is to expand to other markets when uh, they're worldwide so clearly if you look at our expansion plans we are looking at entering the uk market because nhs is very very forward looking when it comes to digital health and even the uk government has come up with massive uh, programs to preventive healthcare focus where they want their citizens to become healthy so that completely fits our vision so definitely uk is on the cards and similarly singapore and south east asia is on the cards so we are hoping that once the lockdown restrictions are reduced we will be able to start looking at launching in these markets any any like problems or new new challenges you face when you try to expand clearly we have to localize the product the same product will not go oh, there might be changes which needs to be done of course there is a lot of compliance because of the privacy regulations etc so clearly we have work around them but yeah they are not show stoppers but yeah there are definitely things which we have to focus and work on i see thank you Uh, to sum up our great conversation, I want to talk a little bit again about preventive healthcare. You've talked about it a lot. Uh, could you just elaborate? Why do you think this is the future of digital health? See, clearly the curative method of healthcare has failed. I think we have seen with COVID, right? The system is just not designed to get people and treat them. I mean, we've seen what has happened, right, worldwide. So. if you are going to create a country and already we know countries uh, in europe are struggling with healthcare expenditure japan is struggling with healthcare individual and us we know the problems with healthcare so healthcare is in fact becoming a huge portion of the consumers gdp spends and if as a country you have to make your citizens healthier and thus increase your gdp you have to invest in prevention because what is prevention prevention is not not investment it is investment but it is investing in more parks rather than hospitals it is investing in better infrastructure to run and walk than just making you know endless roads and highways 
it is investment in better quality food with and and not having junk food and colas and other things so if you really see what the governments have to do is actually the right thing to do it is about how they are cleaning the environment the global focus is around clean energy and low pollution similarly there is a whole focus around good health which is underlying good for the society very cool i i really wish you to expand your product and to make all people worldwide healthier i think that's really important uh at the very uh, end could you just give some piece of advice to young startups who i'm sure are going to wa- uh, watch this video and like what would you recommend them uh, what are the most important tips you think um, they should so i would say that if you are doing a startup in healthcare don't do it because you have read some report or seen some presentation or seen some video uh, you need to understand the problem and you need to be passionate about solving this because like as you're going to fail every day so if you're not passionate about something you will give up so the people who give up are not the people who did not fail it's because you were not passionate enough to keep finding the answer so i would say that having a great idea is good but having passion around that idea and the purpose around why you are doing it and you know i know uh, i'm sure people here have read simon senek or seen his talk the why is more important so the why is very very important so if you don't have a good enough why on why are you so except saying why well, i want to do this because i want to be rich that is not the the way to do a startup right your why needs to be very important and if you have that then there is nothing which in the world which can stop you from succeeding And I watched one of your videos when you said that uh, you made that 100 kilometer walk. And one of the phrases like that you, your kind of motto of your life is think big. Do you think it helped you to get Goki to that stage where it is? No, that's exactly right. So your vision needs to be big. Our vision is to make the world live 100 years. You know, if I'm able to get longevity, that's what is going to happen. So if your vision is 100 years that's when you will be able to create a big enough impact in the in the life of people so i think sometimes people have very small goals or i mean or small aims you you can have you know like you say milestones to achieve your larger goal but you should have a larger goal which always helps thank you vishal i think that was really interesting and i'm sure people are going to love to hear some of your thoughts and insights Thanks Alex thanks a lot pleasure talking to you and uh, thank you thank Bye. you have a great day bye thank you